Good afternoon, everyone. It is time for another episode of the Get to Know Her show. I am your host, Monica Graves. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, if you are living in Ontario, well, in Southern Ontario, you probably got hit with all that snow yesterday. And I thought, why not wear white today, honoring just being a Canadian girl in a beautiful snowstorm. And of course, Betty White, who would have been 100 yesterday. And I loved all of the posts going around social media saying that Betty White gave us a whiteout on her birthday. It made me so happy because as you know, yesterday was Blue Monday, not an easy day for a lot of people. So whatever joy we can bring into the world, the better. And today we're going to be bringing in some serious joy. But before I introduce our guest, I did want to talk to you about this lovely white top I'm wearing. And this is from our sponsor, Brenda Badome, who is an amazing Canadian clothing designer. You can check her out at brendabadome.com. And if you use the coupon code, get to know her, Brenda is offering us 22% off in 2022 uh, when you order anything from her website, which is so wonderful. And as you also know, our other sponsor, coincidentally, is Glam Jewels. And I'm wearing a lot of my jewels today. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you can see a close up of the jewels in my stories. Um, go to our website, glamjewels.com. There's lots of fun things to pick up, including mask chains, which are making a comeback. <laughs> They're all the rage again. So are you ready for an exciting Tuesday afternoon with an amazing guest to lift your spirits? I sure hope so. Today, you're going to meet Ileana Grimm. Ileana is a creative wizard and artist. Describing herself as a slightly off-kilter Canadian artist who prefers to act her shoe size rather than her age, Ileana turned her doodling during university into the artwork behind her internationally successful company, Grimm. For 32 years, people have enjoyed her humor-infused art. Armed with a rapt sense of humor, sorry, a wrapped, <laughs> armed with a warped sense of humor, a blurred reality for a, a blurred reality, and a talent for twisting everyday themes and phrases. Grimm has created thousands of designs on dozens of products like T-shirts, aprons, tea towels, oven mitts, pot holders, and many more. Many of Ileana's original paintings also harmonize bold color and text, revealing a fresh snapshot of everyday life through familiar imagery and wordplay. It is this combination that makes her work both accessible and appealing. Ileana loves that she can bring laughter to others through what she sees and hears in her everyday life. Here we go. Let's get get ready for some laughter and creative spark with Ileana Grimm. Hello. Hello. There this, you are. This is Monty. Hi, Monty. I'm so happy Monty was available today. I know. I know. He had another booking, but it was canceled because <laughs> of the snow. <laughs> Uh, it is so fantastic. Oh my gosh, he's just so beautiful. And he's on high alert today, I, I see. Yeah, so his head is permanently facing the front door because wow. at any moment he may, his job has to go kicking in, security <laughs> man. And I hope he doesn't start barking while we're doing this. That's okay. It's all right. He's already given me the side eye, like, get ready, because it yeah. might happen. That's okay. He might, totally he good. might actually settle down in a second. Yeah, okay. have a little snooze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Ileana, I'm so happy to have, and you're looking out the window into uh, a whiteout as well in sunny Toronto. Well, not a whiteout, but lots of white stuff on the ground. Oh, yeah. It just looks like a beautiful winter wonderland. <clears throat> and I was going to... Um, do this interview up on the third floor, but the glare from the snow on the roof is crazy. It's insane. I know in my studio today, you're kind of like whited out because there's so much light coming in my face, but I can see you. <laughs> yes. It would, so, it would wash me out even more than I already am. <laughs> I feel that way too. It's like around, uh, I don't know, like late December, I start to notice the summer has completely faded out of my skin yes. tone. I so. typically have a little bit of a glow, but I'm at the tail end of a COVID um, infection. So I'm, um, 
Yeah, I'm uh, I'm honoring Betty White by being white. Yes, amazing. We were both thinking the same thing today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And we have to talk about Betty, but before we get to Betty, mm. I want to ask you the question I ask all of my guests. What mm. did little, little Ileana want to be when she grew up? Mm. The earliest career I can remember was I wanted to be a store detective. A store detective? <laughs> How do you apply for a job like that? No That's clue. A no clue. I just remember getting the information that such a career existed from um, <clears throat> the, uh, my grandfather, who I don't remember exactly what he did for Simpsons, but he was high up. And so okay. whenever there was a, an event at Simpsons, and I found out when I would be there that there were things called store detectives. And I thought, that would be awesome. Just walk around, catch people. <clears throat> Yeah. And then when I told him I wanted to do that, he told me that that wasn't probably the best career choice. And then I wanted to be um, an artist. And then I uh, did not get into the school of my choice. And um, then I wanted to be a doctor. <clears throat> oh, you did. So, but wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> You're not doing both. No. You're not side hustling as a doctor yeah, yeah. during COVID. Well, and, you know, go, if you had a family practitioner called Dr. Grimm, it wouldn't work. <laughs> it just wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. So your grandfather worked at C at Simpsons. That's amazing. Yeah. My, so um, my, uh, at that time, my stepmother, her, her father, who okay. I then grew up to know as a grandfather guy. Oh, he that's was, so he was, uh, he was like a vice president of something very important. Right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's so cool. So yeah. you're, we were talking a little bit off camera about our uh, German work ethic. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Both being German girls. So tell me about your family when they came to Canada. Like, what's the story there? <laughs> well, my father came from East Germany at the time and my mom was... Uh, from Lithuania okay. and they met at the Lithuanian club in Toronto and um, up in Penetang, outside of Penetang, there's a um, an area where a lot of Europeans purchased land and um, I think that they then sort of socialized and that's how they met each other. <clears throat> wow, amazing. I have almost the same story. My my mom and dad both came from Germany, but at different times. Mm. And they met at like a German youth group kind of a thing. And they actually had their first kiss in Bob Cajun. Wow, yeah. that is a yeah. really interesting piece of information that you have. Isn't their that cool? Kiss. Isn't that yeah, cute? First kiss. Wow. That On the May long weekend in Bob Cajun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, I think I could make a song. I know. I was just thinking maybe that could inspire a piece of art. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. <laughs> so, Ileana, what, uh, what school did you apply to that foolishly rejected you? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> uh, I apologize for clearing my throat. <clears> throat> no problem. I, uh, I apologize. I, I, uh, I applied to uh, Ontario College of Art and Design. Okay. Um, and um, in my wisdom, I decided that because I didn't get accepted there, that meant... I was um, I, I wasn't talented enough to apply anywhere else. So I then went to McMaster, and I uh, uh, graduated from the at the time physical education. Now it's kinesiology. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. that's amazing! Isn't that wild? How these messages can really uh, take a toll and put you mm -hmm. in a completely different direction uh, well at the time you know you're 19 and um yeah. <laughs> what is it what do you <laughs> at, i was 19 okay okay Aww. snuggles <laughs> yeah all right all right um at the time i didn't have another voice to say you know um try it from a different angle or don't give up it was just my voice and um you know we all have unforgiving voices in our heads so um yeah i <clears throat> Uh, the, the the process of how they went through your portfolio, the first gentleman said, um, uh, you've copied these. And I said, I hadn't. And then he said, well, not only are you 
plagiarizing, but you're also a liar. Not, not the best. Wow. I know, right? And I hadn't. I mean, I was drawing, I was drawing pictures from like Sears catalogs and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that must have been heartbreaking. And it was, but um, yeah. I, I can now look back and say that was the best thing ever because I don't have formal training. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I always love that that scene in in Ferris Bueller's Day Off when he's got the trump. Never had one lesson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. When he's Self, yeah. Day Off. Um, yeah, so I haven't had any lessons, and um, I'm self-taught, and uh, that means I made my rules. So I like Great. It. I love yeah. it. I have to ask you uh, during that time, how did your parents respond to you getting that rejection? Do you well, remember? I lost my parents when I was quite young. So oh. that's why it was my only, it was my voice that was saying, oh, and this must mean you're not any good. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. I lost my mom when I was uh, two and I lost my dad when I was 13. Oh, geez. Yeah, that's very young. Yes, and at the time, um, it um, yeah, it was you know it was challenging because all my friends had like you know different support groups and um, yeah. you know somebody who picked you up from volleyball practice and all that kind of stuff. And now you know, I, I mean, I, that's just how I grew up, and I've got I've got a wonderful family unit now. I've you know I've got my sister and my brother and family and my cousins and um and we've we've we are, we have a good I, I don't feel like i'm missing any part of family so great so yeah yeah that's and i didn't grow up with that but so yeah. <clears throat> i forged a little bit on my own yes mm. so that whole time that you were at mcmaster were you were you into it like what you were learning were you excited yeah. about it or yeah i was I was really excited about it, and um, I, you know, I've, I've maintained a, a healthy lifestyle despite the fact that I have COVID right now. I've yeah. had a, I've, I've had a healthy um, uh, outlook, and you know, exercise. I eat well, and it was information that I just I loved. But while I was there, I was illustrating for the school newspaper. I was doing you know uh, logos for websites, whatever the heck those were at the time. And so yeah. I always had my interest um, on the side. So, you know, and now it's the reverse. You know, I do art as a career and, you know, exercise on the side. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> so your art is so unique in that it it's just loaded with humor. I mean, you know, and and I love it because sometimes I'll look at one of your pieces and I got to do a second take. Like, it's like, you know, when you see those posts that go by and they give you something meaningful and it says, read that again. Like, sometimes I feel like that with you because it's it's so subtle, but then it's also so obvious yeah. and, and so much fun. So how did that even start for you, Ileana, that you wanted to infuse this humor into your work? Uh, well, I think I've just genetically, I'm an idiot. So that comes naturally. <laughs> and, um, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm uh, show me that cup again. So that is so cool. Thank you. That is really cool. That beats my mason jar of orange juice. <laughs> I have just warm water in here. I'm trying to get all my water in. And if it's warm, I'll drink it. But cold now, water. This, this is mostly water with a bit of orange juice so that I can knock this cold out of my effing head. Good. Mm. That's awesome. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, I went to a camp, Camp Kichikawana. Okay. And um, that is a sorority of the most amazing people you can even imagine. And I was there as a camper, I was there as a counselor, I was there on staff, and then I was on senior staff. And I had the good fortune of being the assistant director for a, a period of time. And the director, Austin Matthews, was a punster. <laughs> he just loved the pun. And I think probably I, by osmosis, I think I just gravitated to his sense of humor. Um, I think now, 
<clears throat> it's, you know, I've branched out, out of just not just having puns, but things that are just silly or absurd. I think I'm probably more drawn now to things that are absurd. Yes. Yeah. Well, and we're living in such an absurd time. So this is like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And I've had my fun with COVID designs. I mean, I don't do anything with them. I just post them for silliness. And yeah, obviously they're kind of peppered with how I feel about things. But um, yeah, there's, um, there's, you got to keep your funny bone through all of this. Yeah, for sure. I loved the illustration you did of the vaccines coming in, the parcel of vaccines, but the snail is dragging the mill. Oh, right. The delivery system for Ontario yeah. vaccines. Yeah. Did, did you see did you see the one where I had the syringe and the little tiny bag of potato chips in it? No. Okay, well, anyway, and I made fun with the fact that we were all being microchipped. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> That's so great. Okay. So first time I ever saw your work was uh, in a gallery called Red Canoe Gallery in okay. Port Carling. And yes. that's where they had such a nice assortment of your t-shirts there. Okay. And uh, my husband was drawn to them immediately. And the first t-shirt he ever had of yours was the one that says, it's all fun and games until someone gets hurt, dot, 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 then it's hilarious. And that is so him. Like, <laughs> Well, that gallery is my sister's gallery. Oh, okay, that's your sister. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And she um, uh, has made quite a name for herself. Um, all Canadian art. Um, and uh, I, I guess with a similar last name, I, I snuck in with uh, my t-shirts. And she's got lots of my paintings too. Yes. Yeah. She has a really good selection. That's mm -hmm. so good. So I wanted to just highlight a couple of them just for anybody who's watching who may not be familiar with Grimm and I'll try to describe in the best way. I can. But there's a really great illustration you do of, and it's on a t-shirt as well, of a dog sniffing another dog's butt. <laughs> and awesome? it's called Friend Request. <laughs> and yeah. then, it's, and, so, it's so fun. It's so fun. And then I love the one of the octopus. Oh. Uh, with, I can't remember now what's in the Wine octopus. glasses. Wine glasses, right. And it says multitasking, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. And and then the other thing I wanted to ask you about, because there is so much humor around, like, the, you know, the woman with her glass of wine rescue. Oh, her. Pearl. What's her name? Her name's Pearl. Pearl and she wears beautiful pearls and she has like a Doris Day hairdo but black and then she's yes. got skinny cigarette pants and she's quite well endowed and then she's got like her cutesy pink top that she wears yes. and she's just fabulous and there's one uh, you did for International Women's Day and it's it says I am a woman hear me poor and she's got a <laughs> uh, so how how was Pearl born because she's I feel like she's become somewhat of a trademark you know, she's, I, um, this is quite a few years back and I wanted to start exploring the world of licensing. So, um, uh, companies, different manufacturers will pay me a royalty to use my product, uh, to add value to their product. So I worked with recycled paper greetings, um, doing greeting cards for them for several years. Um, right now I'm, um, I'm on an app, it's called Be Momentful, and there's lots of pearl options. So it's basically an online, um, uh, to send a moment to someone, um, to make it understandable, a greeting to somebody. So, you know, a couple panels, uh, I, I licensed to, well, uh, several different companies and US, you know, they magnets and all kinds of different things. So I started... I wanted something that would make sense in that marketplace. So I started to do Pearl and then I did this clown, um, probably started from the clown that's behind me, but it didn't end up looking like that. Um, and his name's Salty the Clown and, and just in general. And I wanted to hopefully grow that to the point where, you know, it was uh, passive income. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I've already got the design. I mean, yeah. Over the years, I have, you know, I've got thousands of designs. And that's what's thousands of designs that have gone into the market. Um, I, you know, like, for instance, the, the snail pulling 
the vaccines. I mean, that that doesn't belong. That's not anywhere other than you happen to see it on my page because I'm just being a goof that day. But that's right. not on a that's not on a product or anything. So I thought, well, if I've already got all this artwork, I may as well like utilize it. Yeah. That's great. And you know what I am so thrilled about is yesterday you gave me my first NFT. I'm going to call it an NFT to be cool. I know, right? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I think that I is know. an NFT, is it not? It, that's it's, just... Um, it's like an original piece of uh, of digital art that nobody else will have but me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> my my better half is, is um, trying to explain it to me. But it's like... What? Really? It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, I have a friend who bought one and it is just this, it was like this three-dimensional image and and um, it, it's so hard to describe, but the image was almost like an angel wizard kind of thing and it kept <laughs> unfolding and to all these different formations and these beautiful glowing colors like pinks, soft pink and purple and yellow. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you because she's got it posted on her page, but okay. it's so cool. So yeah. this is something maybe Kat can uh, mm -hmm. get you out well, it's with. A it's a mystery to me, so I have to learn it somehow. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, it's so neat. Mm. So, so Ileana, the first time you and I met, that was mm. at the gift show in Toronto. Yeah, at uh, the Toronto... Uh, uh, well, I, I guess then it was called the Canadian Gift and Tableware yeah. UTA show. But now it's the Toronto Gift Mark Fair Market. I don't know. They keep yes, changing. They keep they changing. Keep re branding themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So that's quite something. Have you missed that with COVID? <laughs> Have you missed standing at the Who's listening? Who's listening? No, I'm I don't miss doing um I don't miss doing the trade shows. I do miss my customers. Mm -hmm. I've had some just lovely customers that for years and years and I um and you always have a good giggle and I I, I miss seeing them. I you know uh, as we talked about before we went live, um mm -hmm. you and I both um did the one of a kind show for a mazillion years. Yeah. And there's something really amazing about hearing people not be able to breathe because they're laughing at your stuff. And I don't get that anymore. Yeah, you know what? You're like the rock star who can't be on stage. I am a rock star. Of course you're a rock star. Hello, that's a given. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the things that we were talking about you know, yeah. before, uh, things that I've been watching on YouTube, yeah. and it was like the, the craziest festivals around the world, and one of them is the Air Guitar Festival. So, oh my God, I'm going. I'm a rock star. I want to go to that. I'm a professional air guitar. Actually, I have at the cottage, Wayne uh, zhuzhed up one of those, um, oh gosh, what's it called? The, you know the guitars from that Guitar Hero, that video game? And he put like glitter all over it and whatever. It's like a virtual, anyway, but it, it looks like a guitar. You can't play it. And I use that as my air guitar when I'm at the cottage. I like that. Where is your so, cottage? It's actually not far from uh, from Red Canoe. Whereabouts? Yeah, it's um. I'll give you the address offline. <laughs> <laughs> How lucky so are you? That is my. Yeah. That's like for me, Northern Ontario is heaven on earth. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's amazing. It fills me up. There's, uh, I, you know, we've we've been lucky enough to um, go. My business partner Jane, her family has a cottage up there, and I've been um, blessed to enjoy that space and draw the same tree and paint the same tree and live that tree over and over again in my head. I just, it just, yeah. there is something about the Canadian shield that, <clears throat> and obviously it came from being at camp and stuff. And I grew up up North too. So yes. Yeah. It, it fills my spirit. And you draw the, those trees, you depict them perfectly. Like the the illustration you did with the boys in the water. Oh right, those yeah, the old boys club. Yeah, the old boys club. Yeah, that so. I also ended up doing that as a commission for somebody up in Muskoka, um, and that piece she wanted she wanted a painting for the uh, inside of her boathouse. Oh. So you, you, you know, yeah, you know they got money if it's for the inside of the boathouse. 
It's like uh, the inside of your <laughs> toilet seat. Yeah, my pantry, where I keep the clean. <laughs> pantry. Oh, oh again, God. here's my pantry art. <laughs> So I have to, not to go back to the rock star thing, but we can, because I can talk about that. I am a rock star. Let's go back. You are a rock star. And mm -hmm. I have to share with you a funny piece of art mm -hmm. that I think you'll appreciate. So um, I, I actually posted it the other day on my Instagram mm -hmm. channel, and it says, it, it's a Roy Lichtenstein, but the bubble says, everywhere I go, people treat me like I'm a rock star. Oh, so I, I was that. like, yeah, I'll sh I'll send it to you after. But I was on mm -hmm. Queen Street one day and I saw it and I was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. And I walk in the store and they're playing Led Zeppelin mm -hmm. and I love Robert Plant and I have the same birthday as him. So I go up to the counter and I'm like, oh, my God, this is destiny. I just saw that painting. I have to have it. And I have the same birthday as Robert Plant and blah, 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 blah. Like the guy doesn't care, but I'm like yeah. having my fun with it. Yeah. And he goes, you're oh, you're a Robert Plant fan. I go, yeah. And he goes so I guess you're a Rob Ford fan as well. And I go, a Rob Ford fan? What are you talking about? And he you said, Barney Rubble? Yeah, he goes, oh, don't you get the joke? We we paired Lichtensteins with Rob Ford quotes. And that's one of his quotes. Everywhere I go, people treat me like I'm a rock star. He didn't say that. And then I said, we will never speak of this again. But then as I looked around at other Lichtensteins, I'm like, oh, that sounds like something Rob Ford. So they did this whole collection. I should show you some of the drawings I did of Rob Ford, you know, rest in peace. And I would never do anything like that now. But while he yeah. was alive, I had, I had a lot of fun with him. <laughs> so funny. Did you see the video going around yesterday of Doug Ford shoveling snow? No. Oh God. Okay. I'll get, I'll send you that too. That was pretty hilarious. I've been on a bit of a news diet. So, oh good. yeah. Yeah, well, I just found, um, it, you know, it, there's, it's hard enough um, ha having the changes and, you know, of course it impacts business and it impacts your psyche and, and, you know, and, and now I've got F and COVID myself. Yeah. So it really tells you that it's just a regular cold can come over and I'll gladly blow my nose in their direction. Um, uh, I... <clears throat> I, I just found it was just mentally getting me down. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, yeah, so hence why I'm watching the 10 scariest roads not to travel on. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Mm. So, Ileana, that was mm. going to be my next question to you. What are you doing? See, you're a mind reader. What are you I, doing through the pandemic to keep your spirits lifted? I do want to touch on Betty White as well. Okay. I love what you told me off screen about your discovery with her funny <clears throat> um uh keeping sane um well in the in the summer months um we sit on the roof <laughs> and you know, we've got a we've got a, a rooftop area that we call tar beach and um <laughs> it's beautiful and it's got a garden and we grow fresh vegetables and yes we drink too much beer and um we laugh a lot and now, when it first all started, we were, um, <clears throat> well, we turned the basement into a putting green. And um, I know we had this like little course down there. And then we found other games like we played ping pong off of the dining room table. And um, um, we have a lot of fun actually. And uh, you know, when one of us is feeling down, the other one usually isn't. So we kind of slinky each other forward. It's like, Hey, come on, come on, come on. Um, our newest little entertainment is we have a pedestal and we're doing art installations and you can change it anytime you want. <clears throat> so, oh. yeah, it'll be kind of fun. I need a nicer lamp, though, so that it's really kind of uh, museum-esque. Right. And it just really focuses down. And it can be anything. There are no rules. So yeah. when you come around the corner, the pedestal could have something brand new on it that day. That's a lot of fun. Oh, that's so great. Mm. This is wonderful because I think for so many of us, you know, you, it's so easy just to get kind of, you know, you do your day's work, you watch TV, you, you know, you eat your dinner in front of the TV, you watch TV till time for bed, and then that's it. It's <laughs> like, you know, you're trying to get joy from the screen, like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe 
movie and then you're on the phone or maybe somebody did something on Instagram that's going to light me up. Like, and it, it, it's really, it, it does weigh heavy on your, uh, see, Monty's agreeing with me. That's a waste of life. Buddy. Well, you know, um, uh, last March, um, when we went into that next lockdown yeah. and it was going to be a month long <clears throat> and I had done this before, um, a 30 day ab challenge. And so I posted that on my Ileana page, not my grim page and said, um, Hey, who wants to join me? And a couple people joined me and then they fell off the rails and, uh, a good friend of mine, her sister is um, still active and we're now into like month 11 and we're doing all these different 30 day challenges to keep our strength. I mean, I'm good at cardio, but I, just to keep our, um, our strength and it's a daily thing. It's kind of fun because I didn't want to come out of this having wasted two years. Right. Exactly. And so I've done a lot of creative work and I've done a lot of paintings. Um, not in the last week because I'm, I'm very intimate with my Kleenex box right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor th I, That just sucks. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Bring on Always the Kleenex. Get it with the lotion. Oh yeah. Especially for COVID, of COVID cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Ileana, when you're creating, what, what's going on in your mind? Like I, I'm curious to know because sometimes, like I know for me, when I'm creating jewelry, I'll have this idea in my head and I'm like, I know exactly what it's going to look like. I know how it's all going to come together. But the process can be emotional. It can be tiring. It can be like frustrating. And I don't know if that's me and my intensity of trying to control the outcome. But are, are you that way as well where you're you've already got it in your head and it's got to come out this certain way, or are you a person who really enjoys the process and you just sort of let be what's going to happen? No. <laughs> <laughs> who are you, Ileana? I want to know what's going on in your artistic brain. <laughs> I, um, I have a, I have a sketchbook with me all the time and, um, some things are good and some things are really bad. Um, sometimes I think I'm really clever. And then the next day I kind of go, what was I thinking? Um, because, because my art ends up on products and it has to be marketable and it has to, it has to appeal to a whole bunch of people. That's a very different process than if I were painting. Ah. If I'm painting, I just have to paint for me. Or if it's a commission, I want to saw off my arm because those are really hard. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but when I'm when I'm creating designs for Grimm, um, <coughs> tell me more. <laughs> what then? What happened? <laughs> uh, the neighbor's dog is barking. Oh. Bark off. Well, he's got to chime in then. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm in a, I'm in a semi detached, so, um, uh, we get to enjoy, um, uh, a very close relationship. Um, but it's okay. Don't worry about things. Um, I, um, uh, I have categories for Grimm that, um, sell well. So I kind of pimp myself for, okay, wine is a, is a good design. Uh, hockey is a good category. Um, beer, uh, one-liners, um, animal humor, <clears throat> and I'll take a look and it's like, okay, well, you know, I haven't done, uh, I haven't done a cat design in a while. And, you know, so we need something new to freshen up for the cat people. So yes. I, I, okay. So what's funny about what's, what's a funny thing to think about cats right now? So, and I kind of, okay, well, they always want to eat. So um, a new magnet that I just finished, which is going to be available at the virtual gift show. Uh, it's got a cat with, with a guitar. And the, and, the, and the cat says, and this is Zoe, Zoe's got a lot of attitude. And she says, I wrote you a little ditty. Is it ditty? Did I say ditty? A jingle, maybe I said jingle. I wrote you a little jingle and it goes like this. There's no freaking food in my bowl. <laughs> and it's really cute. And everybody that has a cat can relate to that. And I don't have a cat and I can relate to that. Yeah. So, it, you know, I kind of have to figure, okay, 
um, who's going to enjoy that? And will enough people enjoy that? Yes. So yes. it's really stressful. And I become sometimes a little bit miserable because then I think it's a really good design and then I'll show it to people who uh, I, uh, their opinion matters mm -hmm. or because I work with them or whatever. And they'll go, yeah, too many words, not funny. And it just, it's like, oh. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. So different processes. For my, sure. favorite, my favorite is to just do silly things. Um, and I wish I could earn a living from those, those, like for instance, the, the snail pulling the shipping yeah. container. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And why, why couldn't you, you don't think that would. Well, I don't know where to, there's nowhere where that would go. Oh, it could be an NFT. Uh, that's what I was just thinking. It could exactly. definitely be an we NFT. Are, we are this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that I can come up with something funny for the acronym NFT. Yeah. Or, you know, it would be fun if you built a COVID collection, like a wall art thing where it was just like little pieces of wall art and people just kept collecting them as the pandemic went on and they could fill like for who, I don't know how much longer mm -hmm. it's going to go. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. you had like a 20 by 75 foot wall with all your little COVID jokes. <laughs> well, for a while. Might I was losing my mind a little bit and um, um, a deranged teenager left a shopping cart on our front lawn and um, um, and I didn't know that's where it came from. Anyway, uh, we started to decorate it. Um, it first had a sign, um, Kat put a sign up that said, um, uh, what was it? It had to do with... Um, because everyone was buying toilet paper, will okay. work near kind of a thing. And yeah. then it grew into this decorated shopping cart that had um, all kinds of little paintings and drawings. And at that time, families were actually pulling up and parking their car to come specifically to the shopping cart. <laughs> it's, it's in the backyard. I haven't had the heart to dismantle it. It's covered in snow right now. <laughs> But um, yeah, you know, just little things. And and when I realized how the kids were really enjoying it, I, I simplified some of the jokes. So it was a bumblebee and it was like, be nice. And, you know, <clears throat> distance makes the heart grow fonder because we were trying to distance. And so yeah. and the kids would sit there and read all these things because they were easy words and stuff. It was really fun. And then when the snow came and the shopping cart wasn't really visible, then I started to freeze things in the refrigerator like so then I'd have balloons and and <clears throat> surgical gloves and so the front lawn was all these frozen things so, oh that's great yeah Br fun. brought some joy to the neighborhood it just occurred to me you may be the inventor of the meme I could I think you but are I, mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I actually invented the dictionary <laughs> I decide the new words that go in. I, I like vote, that. I vote that pivot gets taken out. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah. Please, please. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That and narrative. Oh, yeah. Do not narrative. just choke yourself to death. Oh, no. the narrative. <laughs> I know. There are certain words. So... <laughs> How many years have you been in business now, Eliana, with your art? I, uh, well, I started when I was two. Yeah. So 34 years. <laughs> I like it. Mm -hmm. did, did you ever, did, did, you, did you ever exhibit like down at the Harbor Front or anything like that? Did you do that? And in... no. <clears throat> no, no. I think my, no. um, my 15 minutes of fame, according to Andy Warhol, and I'm hoping that I still have many more 15 minutes. I was doing the licensing show in Vegas. Okay. And <clears throat> these two people walked by my booth and then they came back and then they came back and they said, do you paint? And I said, yes. And then they walked away like little chipmunks. And then they came back and they said, no, but really, do you paint? And I said, yes, I paint. And you don't know who you're talking to half the time. Anyway, yeah. long story short, they that was the owner and the vice president of a chain of galleries in vegas and they were in all the major hotels and i um 
uh, for the rest of their, because they ended up going bankrupt with everything happening, the crash and everything else. Yeah. But that was a really cool period of time. I sold a lot of paintings. And wow. we, yeah. And it was, it was all original art you were selling. Yeah. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. I was sending out crates of artwork and it was, um, it was really awesome for the ego. <clears throat> yeah. 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 That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And, but then they, you know, went belly up and that's too bad. But um, yeah. it, it set a new, it, it well, it it did a lot of really great things for me long term beyond just selling to them. Yeah, mm. that's wonderful. And then you did a really amazing uh, project for National Cancer Survivor Day. Yeah, it was, um, they were, um, the Canadian Cancer Society approached me to do a commission. <clears throat> they did, um, I think they did three across Canada and I was one from sort of central Canada and they wanted to do a campaign on bone health okay. because the, um, uh, my understanding is, is that, um, one of the pathways that, um, cancer likes to live, um, from prostate and breast cancer is it goes into the bone. So I was paired up with two survivors, uh, <clears throat> and they both told me their story and I combined it into a painting that was a bull and um, a, a bird sitting on top of the bull's head grabbing the bull's tail and the combination of those was um, the the breast cancer survivor she um, her her story that really rose to the surface was you have to be your own advocate you just can't you have to just you have to be a bull and don't take no and push and push and get the answers and get the treatments and get the, the medications that you need. And his story was he knew that there wasn't something right. And his story and message to people was that you have to be the early bird. You have to catch it right at its beginning so that you can um, survive and you can get through it. So I brought those two together and they, it was a pretty groovy painting. Yes, I saw it. It's amazing. So I love the photo. You're with the two of them in the photo, which is so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, okay, so you saw yeah, that. Yes. Saw it, yeah. Yeah, they did a really, really nice um, presentation um, and ceremony in uh, in Yorkville. And oh, okay. then now it hangs in the cancer, the Canadian Cancer head office somewhere there. Amazing. <laughs> On in the pantry. <laughs> <laughs> in the pantry oh my god the big pantry <laughs> walk-in closet yes yeah. yeah. hey bud we're live we're live yes we are we're live monty's got a voice yes we, are. <laughs> we might have mail um, oh that's um, exciting i'm so sorry <laughs> no that's okay there are a lot of dog yeah. lovers uh, more don't. Tuning okay. in. Don't, don't make me yell at you because it, it hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> oh, I heard that. <laughs> so, uh, Liliana, so you, you had done this beautiful commission piece and then you had your own cancer diagnosis. Yes, I did. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That is now, let's see, where is there wood? Here's wood. Yeah. I am, maybe I shouldn't have knocked because I'll just make him bark. <laughs> what was I thinking? Uh, yeah, that was seven years ago. And um, we're all good now. Perfect. Yes. That's amazing. And and, and you I also... I awesome bald head, by the way. Yeah. I a I, really good bald head. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> did, so when you had to shave your head, did you do it yourself or did you have... Did you have somebody supporting you? Did Pat do it for you or? Um, uh, no, uh, no, but she was very supportive through the whole thing. Yeah. I, um, uh, well, you know what's going to come. And I had yeah. long hair. My hair yeah. was just a tiny bit shorter than yours. And you know what's coming. And they recommend that you uh, just cut your hair short mm -hmm. so that it's just a little bit of an easier time. Right? Yeah. And then, um, so I got a short haircut, which I hadn't had in like 30 years. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, I can remember the one Wednesday I went to work 
And I went into the bathroom and it was like, oh, wow, it's starting. And then I came out of my ba bathroom and I went into my business partner's office and I went, watch. And it's just like whatever you had in your hand, just yeah. come out. So I sent a little video or a picture or something to Kat. And then she, um, her really good friend uh, <laughs> that she's in a band with is also a hairstylist. <clears throat> and I went there and <laughs> after work and could, took it all off yeah. and yeah. then found lots of hats. Wow. And you were so happy with your beautiful head. You didn't realize what a gorgeous shaped head you had. It was fantastic. I That's had a great. really good head. And, and it just, you know, you put on earrings and makeup and you, you look, you don't look sick until you lose your eyebrows. Yeah. And then you're really rocking the, ooh, something's wrong with you look. Yeah. And, and then you don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. Well, yeah. Good. I'm so glad. And I, and I love your story about how you actually found your lump and, um, yeah. And, and you, yeah, that's, amazing. that's something in front of everybody. Hmm. We, um, you know, I, 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 I was mentioning to you, like probably 70% of everyone I know of that has gone through this found it themselves. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just, just a really good reminder. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm laughing because the basement dweller is coming up oh. to try to make the dog be quiet. Because <laughs> we've divided the house up because I have COVID and, yeah. and he can't. And I, I yeah. love it. So you have to share with everyone how you guys are spending your evening. So you've got the house blocked off. Yeah. For so, protection. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm right now in a sanctioned area. I shouldn't be here, but we'll clean it up because the glare from the sun is too big and so I have um this TV and that sofa and then upstairs and Kat gets the room I'm in right now and the kitchen and the basement which also has uh bedding and a pull out south sofa and TV and she gets the ex exercise equipment which is fine because I can't really take a deep <laughs> breath <laughs> no that's right no and then in the evening um with a mask we sit at at the at the boundary at the uh, borderline of um north korea and south korea and um we find the most ridiculous things we can find on youtube oh that's great so at first we were on trains going through switzerland um which is kind of cool because you learn a lot and then we went to the top 10 small towns in switzerland uh, last night we were on an icebreaker it was okay. Like polar bears. Yeah. And we went on the 10 scariest roads you never want to drive on. Um, we visited the most ridiculous festivals in the world. Um, oh, oh, we went into the hidden tunnels of New York. There are tunnels. Oh my God. That's so yes, cool. Tunnels. And we also went into the two abandoned uh, TTC uh, stations in Toronto. And this is all on YouTube. All on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Have you guys ever watched, uh, there's um, a documentary called Long Way Round. I think it's called Long Way with Ewan McGregor and his friend Charlie Borman. And they go on motorcycles like all through Asia. I think They're, I went it, with him on a cycling tour, but it wasn't, I think it was, I do think it was in Ireland or somewhere. Yeah, they did Ireland as well. Him. Yeah, Love so him. good. Yeah, you got to watch all those as well. Yeah, I yeah. love those kind of shows. Yeah, I mean, That's you know, certainly we watched Goodfellas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, a, a good fictional. Well, it's not fictional, but um, you know, good movies are always good. But um, uh, it's kind of nice to learn something. Um, yes. Now that Anthony Bourdain can no longer travel with me everywhere, yeah. um, I know I loved him. Yeah, I know. I know. Too much animal eating for me, but um, the rest of everything that he did was good. Yeah, that's good. Are you yeah. vegetarian? I'm not. Um, okay. And uh, well, we just really don't. It's not. It's not a big part of my meal. And I would like to stay ignorant as far as how it got to my plate. Yeah, I yeah. hear you. I know that's. Uh, I. Uh, you know, I'm. I'm quite happy to eat only vegetables, and every once in a while we have meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need your schnitzel. You're Ger you got the German and the Latvian. <laughs> I know. There's nothing like a good sausage and sauerkraut, right? Yes, exactly. Isn't that the best. Oh, it's so good. When I was, oh. I think 
Oh, when I was th just before my 30th birthday, I went to the doctor and I was like, I'm not feeling too hot. I'm so lethargic. Well, and she goes, listen, you've been on this vegetarian kick for 10 years now. She said, both your parents are German. You need a schnitzel, a beer and sauerkraut. And you will not look that up in any medical no. digest, but that's what you need. And you'll feel way better. And so for my 30th birthday, I said, well, I'm going back to meat. So I, yeah, but you don't need to have a lot of it. No, no, no. But that's I do find that if I'm if we're doing beans for a period of time, um, that yeah. it's just ah, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> and don't use this color as my usual color. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is my uh, COVID couture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mm -hmm. love it. Mm -hmm. So, Eliana, have you have you ever done any mentoring with young artists, or or even had? people talk to you who are self-taught just about you know your your story and your yeah um, the... over the years I've had people who have um um and, and probably more so when I was doing the one of a con show because you're more accessible and yeah. people come in and, and say like how do I do what you're doing right. and um you know I kind of right or wrong i share what worked for me so yeah. um i think it was <clears throat> at that time i was you know when i started i was young and female and i think it was really hard to um get you know like credit established with companies and stuff like that because you know you weren't really taken that seriously it's very different now and i'm happy about that um I, you know i've had yeah, over the years, well, a handful of people, you know, yeah. and I try to help as much as I can. That's great. So what would you say to any young aspiring artist or somebody who's maybe at home now and during the pandemic, they've always wanted to be an artist and they're- Wash your hands. <laughs> yeah. Don't, Don't touch your, do you, you know what I'm, I'm realizing because I can see myself, I'm realizing how much I touch my face. It's no see? wonder I'm sick. Yeah. Like I may as well go lick the TTC handrail. <laughs> Bring on immunity. <laughs> I know that's how we build it. You're going to be like superwoman now after this. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 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 Um, I would probably say um, if I were to talk, tell if I were to give advice to my younger self. Mm -hmm. stop looking at what everyone else is doing oh that's so great you know, just be you mm -hmm. um <laughs> what he said <laughs> i love what monty agrees with everything yes. is he's a real thinker do you like his little bitch bark because he knows he's not supposed to bark so he just gets that one in yeah it's really high it's really shrill <laughs> and what's really fun is we have an outdoor heat lamp with, it's got a really big dome. Oh. And sometimes we're just lazy and we leave it here in the corner because it goes out to the porch and then we come back in. Not right now because we can't be near each other. But when he barks, there's a reverberation that happens in the inside. So it just doesn't end. It just keeps <laughs> barking and barking and barking. <laughs> it's like, oh, you feel like, you know, you're in a temple somewhere. <laughs> I love it with the Monty bark. <laughs> yes that would be a good way to start a meditation huh. i'm trying to learn how to do that do you meditate uh i try i i'm good with the guided meditation yeah me too me too yeah but just to sit there yeah i i'm i that's something i would like to master is controlling my thoughts because mm. they're loud and they get carried away i started when i was in university i took um I took a yoga class and meditation uh, practice was a part of it. And I really struggled. But, you know, even if you get 10 seconds worth of freedom, it's worth it. Yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I was listening this morning on my walk. I was listening to Jay Shetty. Do you ever listen to him? He, he, wrote, um, he wrote a book, How to Think Like a Monk. I think it's called How to Think. Well, I, run, I run a monk. <laughs> <laughs> that's good too <laughs> but he was talking about when he first uh like joined the oh my god the temple and um 
he, you know, it would be like little, these 10 minute meditations. And they were so like, how am I going to sit for 10 minutes just in my own? How am I going to do this? And by the end, I think he was there for two years or a year. I can't remember. Um, he was able to meditate for eight hours. Whoa. Can you imagine? No. Yeah. Oh, Unbelievable. eight hours. That's, um, yeah. Couldn't. <clears throat> yeah. I'm no. just going to try for my 30 seconds. Yeah. But I like what you say. Like, even if you get that 10 seconds of detachment. Yeah. yeah. Well, anything that I've listened to sort of as far as guidance in that direction, um, they say, you, you know, don't aspire to be a master at this because nobody is. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, we're human. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that um, part of my creative process is if I can free up the noise yeah. so that um, sort of more, uh, uh, the absurd and the bizarre and the fun stuff comes yeah. to the surface and it's not weighted down with all this other stuff. Right, exactly. And do you, so when you're painting just for the sake of painting, mm. do you go into that? meditative place. I can you know you know what like when you're in the zone yeah 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 when you're in the zone and you're not always in the zone but when you're in the zone mm -hmm. yeah I, I can yeah and I think it's so it's such a great message because I think that's something that's important for people to know who do want to turn their art into their full-time mm -hmm. you know thing that pays the bills because that's where <laughs> you start to think about, you know, is this going to sell? Who's the customer? What do who am I, you know, what demographic am I making this for? Who's, and, and that's where you kind of lose the, it's not that you're losing your creativity. You're actually becoming even more, you're like creating on demand, which can be quite exceptional as well. But just to get lost in it and to be in that zone where it's like, oh my God, is it already eight o'clock at night? And I haven't even, didn't even have lunch or dinner. Like this, you know, you're just yeah. flying high and you're, yeah. I, mi I miss that sometimes. I, I don't have those moments as often as I used to when I was just kind of playing around as a hobby, right? Yeah, I t I'm totally with you on that. It's um, when, when you get to, to create um, for no one, it's the best. Yeah. You know, you know, you're not thinking, oh, will someone buy this? And, you know, do I, <clears throat> do I need more glitter on it? Or, you know, should it be longer? Yeah. Um, it's just like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Mm. I was actually talking to a friend on the weekend and um, I, it's, so Ileana, before I was doing jewelry, I was hand painting t-shirts and I was plagiarizing. Oh, you're a competition. And uh, the college accepted me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was doing was like from the time I was 16 until my mid 20s, I was painting T-shirts and doing wall murals. But basically in high school, what it was, was people would be like, hey, can you put the Rolling Stones Tattoo You album cover on a shirt for me? So I would trace it all and then <clears throat> paint it in, you know, so <clears throat> I was basically replicating album covers, which is what the guy did in Xanadu, who, my favorite movie. Anyways, so <laughs> more plagiarism. <laughs> so I love the plagiarism, Disney murals, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey and, who? <laughs> yeah, what's that? Mickey. Disney. Yeah, Mickey, for sure. And um, so then I thought, you know, I was saying to my friend, I'd love to just start like doing little pieces of art, but I really want to create something that's me because I've only ever done this <laughs> plagiarized. <laughs> so she goes, she's like, well, you said it, not me. <laughs> and then I said, and then I'm like, and they could be like little things and maybe I could sell them and blah, blah, blah. And she goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why don't you just every month take one day 
to explore your creativity, like paint, and then do something else. Maybe do like, I don't know, like crocheting or do, you know, just every month, give yourself a challenge and stop trying to sell it. And I, that's how my brain works now. I'm like, who would want this? Like before I've even friggin' got the paintbrush out, I'm already thinking about who's going to buy it. What, yeah. So then I'm that's like, super the fastest, that gets the fastest cold shower creatively ever <laughs> is yeah. thinking about it's like, what pantry is this going to live in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, John, John Cleese um, has some really great um, uh, essays on creativity. And one of the things he always recommends is doing something creative unrelated to the task at hand. Okay. I can't. Okay. So he was on. Um, oh, God. Was on, on, yes. But he was interviewed on Conan O'Brien. Do you oh. listen to his podcast? No, Conan but I O'Brien will Oh my God, you'll die. It's my whole, I live for that podcast. Okay. It's hilarious. It's so funny. But yeah. So what he said, they were talking about this exactly. And he said, if you're stuck creatively, go do something, go do the dishes and come back to it. So now I've been doing that whenever I am stuck. I go to the back of my studio, I clean a dish or two and the water and everything. It just gets my brain working in a different way. So now my mom has this joke too, when I'm, you know, I'm always telling my mom, oh, I want to do this. And I can't think of what to come up with. She goes, why don't you go wash the dishes? <laughs> and it works. It's so, so true. Way back when, <clears throat> yeah. so now we're going full Germanic circle. Okay. I had a design and it said, use the good dishes. Uh, my aunt, uh, rest her soul. Um, so we had this huge family dinner and my second cousin and her husband had joined all of our families, his family and our family. <clears throat> and they had a set of 24 dishes from their wedding. What do you do with 24 dishes, right? Yeah. Well, we've got 25 people sitting at this elongated table. Yeah. If not now, when? <laughs> so when we're in the kitchen and my aunt Edith, she says, now, nah, yeah. <laughs> not the good dishes, not for them. <laughs> oh, so, so in order, my my second cousin and I, we still crack about that. I had to do it. I had to do a shirt that said, "Use the good dishes," but don't wait. Don't wait. That's so <laughs> great. I could just hear your tante Edith. Yeah, <laughs> not the good dishes, not, not, not for them. them, not for them, not the good dishes. <laughs> Oh, it's so true that's no, what um, is it with the, 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 the generation man and it's and it's still like i don't know about you but sometimes like if i'm just at home mm -hmm. and i have something clean to wear that's nice i'll go well i'm not gonna see anybody save i'll save it like how dare i feel good by myself i know no it's just so funny and and you know however it happens uh we we absorb the ways they were. My aunt Edith. <laughs> I love it. The trucker. <laughs> Back in when you had answering machines, right? I'd leave. Mm -hmm. I'd have these ridiculous answering machines. So at Christmas there'd be like a little clip. I'd 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 lift from <gasps> plagiarism. I'd lift from <laughs> Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, you know. And <clears throat> she would call for shits and this. What is <laughs> this message for shit? It's Edith. Love you. <laughs> that is so awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. my God. And she used I... to ask me, um, oh, that's nice. When we talk about my business. Oh, yeah. that's nice. And what are you going to do next? <laughs> I love well, it. I kind of am kind of stick with this for a while. <laughs> it's kind of working. <laughs> oh, that's nice. What are you going to do next? <laughs> Do you make a living from that? Do you remember getting that answer when you were when you were first starting? Oh and are you able to make a living from, from Oh that? God, people coming up to the booth. Like, yeah. so you mean to so tell funny. me, yeah, you mean to tell me that you can pay a, a mortgage and with this? <laughs> it's like, oh my God. <laughs> no, no. It's like the biggest insult. I know. I know. I started making, uh, I started all of this with hand-painted t-shirts. 
Okay, so this is why I'm like, shit, man, maybe we even knew each other. It's like in the 80s, were you at the CNE for the 21 days torture? Oh, <laughs> Did gosh, you do that? What are you, crazy? Yeah. <laughs> No, <laughs> but I did um, outdoor markets like Kemp and uh, like the Kemp and Fest up in yeah. Barry, and then I got into the one of a kind, and I did a lot of like fall markets and. Okay. Yeah, and then oh, I realized so that hand painting was not <laughs> going to make me any money. So what paints I, did you use? Acrylic. Okay. I do you remember Trichem? Yeah. <laughs> they were like tubes. Yeah. I um and I used to do a lot of um uh spraying with toothbrushes so I'd get this speckle. Oh yeah that's so speckle. cool. Yeah. Um oh, and then I I went and uh, volunteered at a soap screener. Um uh, and I said you don't have to pay me and I have no intentions of staying here I just want to learn how to soap screen and that's when I started to soap screen. Oh that's so cool. Yeah. So what year were you at one of a kind? What was the time period that you were in the show? Oh boy, oh boy. Um, well, I was uh, when Marty and Steven owned it. So I was a long time ago. <clears throat> oh, that's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. And then when I started to wholesale um, and they started to really want uh, the one of a kind to be quite um, exclusive, um, mm -hmm. they didn't, uh, they, yeah. So they're, at okay. that time, the restriction was, you know, reproductions and stuff, which silk screening is a reproduction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So oh, that's changed now. Yeah. Oh, totally it's changed. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for the new kids. I'm <laughs> yeah. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. But, so um, I wanted to go back to the, the German for a minute. I just wanted oh. to share with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> with Edith. So my dad, with he's. Bare hands. <laughs> Fat. Sausages, <laughs> little sausages. I got, I got my mama's hands. Oh, you! I'm so, me. you know, what? I'm so grateful. So my mom, she's got very like, like dainty hands and mm -hmm. feet, like ankles, like from the, like from the knee down. She's got beautiful shaped calves. My oma was like, and my dad's side of the family, they're all like, they look like they're Vikings, you know, like they're really, <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, my dad used to say this to me when we'd be going over the business plan, right? He'd oh, sit down. Yes. Yeah. And and then sometimes he'd say, when are we going to turn this hobby into a business, Monica? <laughs> he'd say stuff like that. Or he'd come to the studio when I had eight girls working for me and he'd say, there's far too much giggling and carrying on. This is a business you're running, you know? <laughs> and then a, another classic was... Uh, let me explain this to you in a way that even you will understand. And then I go, Dad, oh, that's so insulting. And he'd it's say, so insulting. It's insulting. I don't understand. You know, like <laughs> my father was in business for himself, and um, he gave me one little gem. And he told me, and for why I remember this, because at thirteen, it's not like I knew I was going to go into business for myself. He yeah. said, "Never have one account that can put you out of business if if they drop you." Holy crap, that's what my dad's advice was to me too. Maybe I'm not kidding. Maybe we have the same father. I feel like we are. You know what's so funny? That, mm. So this happened because in 2008, I had a huge like, whew, it was like my, you know, 2007, mm. eight when everything went mm. up, up. And I had one retailer who was kicking butt. Like it was like daily calls. Like it was thousands of dollars a month. I was just like, holy crap. And my dad said, this is very dangerous. You need yes. to get more people like, yeah. And, and he explained all the reasons. And I, I was so grateful for that advice. My dad, he gave me a lot of great advice, but that also, that stands out big time. Yeah. I, I was thinking about that a couple of years ago. Um, uh, I, I'm fortunate enough to sell to Disney and I have for probably about 18 years. And at one point in time, because as different buyers have, different buying behavior um yeah and at one point in time the one buyer we were working with was really buying a lot right. and it was really monopolizing my business and i thought oh i can hear my dad you know don't have yeah. one customer that could put you out of business if all of a sudden they go away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow this is so cool mm. So listen, Lee, I know you have a full schedule with COVID. Oh, 
I'm Jeez. way over time. We're at like an hour and 10 minutes here, girl. Oh, and I'm, you know, I've almost gone through the mason jar. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'll have to, uh, yeah. I do have a plan, though. Um, yeah, what's your plan? My plan is, um, <clears throat> uh, I was trying to find the silver lining in being sick for um, the last little bit. And um, and uh, I've been watching Betty White, right? Because she, I just love her, and I can't believe yeah. she lost. <clears throat> um, and um, my one aunt is 101, by the way. Oh. I have an aunt that's 101 and still oh. losing. Anyway, I was hoping that Betty was going to make it to her hundredth, but her love for animals. And so I think um, uh, now that I'm starting to feel a little bit better, I'll go upstairs to my studio and um, maybe make some uh, paintings, animal paintings that uh, proceeds can go to a shelter. Oh, my, that's good. Yeah, my sister-in-law is working at a cat shelter right now, so maybe they need some dough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what a wonderful <laughs> idea. Yeah, she was such an animal lover. She sure was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. Yesterday, everybody was encouraged to just donate $5 to their favorite. Yes, the hashtag Betty White, which I just think is so cool. Yeah, so great. Betty Lover in the movie, The Proposal. Oh, God, I have to see that movie again. I ha it's Ryan Reynolds, yeah. Sandra Bullock, <clears throat> um, Betty. Betty just steals the show. Yeah, Betty's amazing. That's mm. what we all need do tonight watch some betty to lift our spirits i like that <clears throat> god you sure have lifted our spirits today iliana thank you You're thanks awesome. for having me oh i loved having you and so what's on deck for you uh in 2022 do you have any big plans anything happening like you know online for you or are you the um i mean COVID has um has really altered the gift industry Mm. Um, with, well, from closures, people going out of business, just not being able to survive. Mm. And um, the supply chain is ridiculous. Getting a container from overseas. We, we do some, mm. um, uh, we do uh, f doormats that come from overseas and to find a container to bring that. And prices are going through the roof. And it's, um, it's a really... It's a challenging time right now, very yeah. challenging. And, you know, the show got canceled again. And, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, <clears throat> we're trying to get our, um, our, instead of the shows, we're trying to go on to, a, a, it's a marketplace platform. So, you know, hopefully that uh, uh, will blossom. It's really, it's going to be strong for Canada and the United States business. So that's kind of cool. On a personal level, I, I want to paint more for myself. And if it great. sounds great, and if it doesn't, <gasps> I'll just, I'll get another pantry. Yeah. <laughs> I might have some spare room in my pantry if you need. Okay. It. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's so great. And I'll definitely be posting my NFT that you uh, okay. made. I hope I'm using that in the right context. I think so. Um, and <laughs> I think most of the people watching have no clue anyway. So you could say anything. <laughs> so we do have some nice comments I want to uh, read out to you before okay. I let you go. Okay. And uh, it's so funny because the sun's so bright. I can't see my little arrow clicker okay here we go so uh, julia watson is either clapping or sending a hug because or maybe it's lemon i'm not sure <laughs> lemon. Yeah, send me a lemon. Lemon. okay send me a lemon um, lemon and honey is what I, i'm being recommended oh perfect okay <laughs> and kyle marie rogan book says i love iliana grim uh jane stevenson yay iliana grim you go girl uh Kyle Marie again says yay for camp. Oh, she's part of the camp. She so where is. Was she's one of my besties. And uh, I'm going to give Kyle a little plug here. We're going yeah. full circle. Kyle is a breast cancer survivor. And it's because of her, I knew that I knew what I was, when I found mine, I knew what it was because she shared when she had hers with us. So we knew what we were, what we were feeling. 
Oh my God. Was like, like I could cry. That was such a big gift. Wow. Oh, that's so great. I'm so happy she's watching. That's yes. awesome. And I, <laughs> awesome. And Kathy Hewson, great person and amazing artist. Uh, Jane says, yay, Perry sound. Sean Manaya says, trying to join. Love our Ileana Grimm. And oh. Oh, then Sean said, there you are. You look great, bud. And uh, Sharon LeMay says, fantastic interview with a lemon. And Wendy, <laughs> Wendy Palmer says, hilarious. So there you go. <laughs> Yay, I know all those people. Oh, good. That's yeah. so awesome. I love it. Well, your story, I mean, I'm so happy that you shared it here. And mm. I hope lots of people get to hear it because it's really great. And and it's a real, um, you know, it's, it's just so inspiring for <laughs> any artist who is self-taught to hear this because just like you. I didn't go to school either. My art teacher told me I didn't know what the hell I was doing in high school. And mm. look at us now. I did very well in art uh, in high school. Um, and now, uh, yes, I'm not um, taught in an institution, but uh, YouTube is an absolute goldmine and I never stopped learning. I never stopped yeah. learning about techniques and not so much my my humor, but my my technical part of painting, things that are just, they're, they're gems. I can't, I, I love it. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. 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 Yes. Learn. Say thank you so much for um, doing what you're doing. It's, um, um, it's, it's not a pivot for you. It's a swivel, as Kat says. Yeah, a swivel. We're not going to use the word pivot. I, I love what you're doing. I love what you have created here. Um, you're getting fantastic people. And uh, I, I just, I hope it continues to grow for you. It's, it's wonderful. Oh, thanks, Ileana. Me too. So <clears throat> awesome. And to know all these amazing women. It's, and if people haven't figured it out yet... <laughs> I interviewed Ileana's partner, Kat, ah. <laughs> from Six Bones, so you guys have to check that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I'm sitting in the same spot, actually. <laughs> Do you think? I think so, because the front room, the yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you didn't get to benefit from seeing Monty's um, installation on the blinds, but um, it was just too too bright in that room. <laughs> okay, so we just have to share with people. Mm. We tried a different room before mm. and Ileana had blinds behind her with a bit of a hole and some shredding going on. And apparently Monty likes to hang from there and watch the passersby. <laughs> yeah. And from the outside, it looks like we live in a crack house and that's okay. <laughs> that's right. It's more of a crack up house. <laughs> It is. It's a total crack up house. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you so much, Ileana. I'm going to put you in the virtual green room. There's a martini waiting for you. Thank you. How thoughtful. COVID martini. <laughs> this has been a screwdriver. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <That's great. laughs> uh, okay, girl. Okay. Get her and I'll be right back with you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Thank you. Oh. Hi, Ileana. You're back yeah. again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, guys. I My screen is so bright and I'm having trouble navigating the mouse here. Thank you so much for joining today. It was wonderful to have Ileana on. She's so inspiring. Her artwork is amazing. Go and check out her Instagram page at Grimm. Uh, and um, you, I'll leave all the information here for you anyway, but uh, if you need a laugh, one look through her feed, you'll be chuckling and feeling really great. So be sure to check her out. Also, please go and visit our sponsor, Brenda Badome at brendabadome.com. Use the coupon code get to know her for 22% off of your order. And make sure you check out glamjewels.com and pick yourself up some sparkly jewels to lift your spirits. Keep on showing the world your sparkle. And thank you so much for joining today. We'll see you again next week.